so much. Welcome to our studio. We are honored and pl privileged to have you at Iran Alive Ministries studio today with us. We appreciate being here, Lily. Thank you so much. Of course. I know a lot of our audience have downloaded um, two of your books that have been um, uploaded on our website as well as on um, various different platforms, social media platforms. Um, I know it's very interesting for those that have already read your book to be able to put a face to your mm -hmm. name and, and see you here at uh, our studio. So yeah. I'm so glad that I get to see you and I'm sure the audience are uh, really privileged to be able to see the author of the books that you have written and they have read and uh, the impact that you were able to make on their lives. So thank you. Thank you. Of course. Um, your life um, story is so powerful of how um, the Lord has really brought you out of the darkness and despair and hopelessness um, to where you felt, I'm sure, abandoned by your parents, and um, you had thoughts of suicide. You had um, experienced drug addictions and whatnot um, to a life that is so powerful today um, that um, is glorifying not only our Father, not only God, but also you're making such impact on the lives of others around you. I would love for you to share with our audience how it began. Tell us a little bit about your story and how you got here. Well, I was born in Los Angeles and my father was an alcoholic and a womanizer, so he wasn't a very stable man. Mm -hmm. And my mother left me when I was five years old and I never saw her again. My father was married four times by the time I was 17, so I started foster care when I was very young. I would go into the foster care, and then he would remarry, and I would go live with him and his wife, and they would get a divorce, and mm -hmm. I'd go back into foster home. So this continued for about uh, 13 years. And around that time, I started realizing that I hated myself. I had, as children often do, they internalize and feel that this is all their fault and they're unlovely and unlovable, mm -hmm. unwanted. Mm -hmm. And so you turn it in on yourself and you uh, begin to do self-destructive things. So right. I started using drugs when I was 13 and when I was 15 I ran away from home mm. because I just felt that no one cared about me and I lived on the street for a month and I was sexually abused the first time, uh, the first time and then I ended up uh, getting arrested and going to juvenile hall, and I was in the part of Los Angeles where I was the minority. Mm -hmm. And so I learned a lot about gangs and racial tension and fear, and I was, you know, simply a runaway from home. Right. And I was in with other uh, kids who had, uh, you know, stolen and, um, you know, murdered and gangs and thievery and all that. So I learned a whole lot there. Sure, sure. And now um, when you were um, going from homes to homes, um, was that the cause of some of the drug addictions or what was it that um, led you into that path in your life? I just, I felt like I was not worthy of mm -hmm. living. I, mm -hmm. I felt like I wasn't worthy of being cared for sure. or loved. Sure. And there was a huge hole there. It, right. I was empty. I was lost. And uh, the drugs just seemed to take you away and make you not feel anymore. Right. And, of course, um, there's a lot of deep feelings that come with that. Absolutely. And I Absolutely. think that's why a lot of people get into addiction because right. they're very sensitive and they feel hopeless, they feel despair, and it's just a way to escape. Absolutely. To be able to um, numb yourself right. to the surroundings and the situations that are happening around you, not to feel anything that's happening. Um, so what happened after that? Um, when did you come to faith? When did you have this transformation that you are experiencing today? I ended up marrying a man who was in prison, ironically, and we later married and had two children, and I had already tried all the drugs that I could get my hands on, mm -hmm. and I didn't know that he was using intravenous cocaine and speed, mm -hmm. and so when, he, when I found out, I, was, I basically really just put my arm out and wow. said, I want to try it too. Sure. 
And I was an IV drug user for six and a half years after that first time. Right. And I overdosed four times, near-death experiences, and I uh, tried to kill myself. I tried c committing suicide on several occasions right. because I, I just didn't want to be here anymore. Sure. I didn't want to feel. I didn't want to sure. live. I didn't care about myself. I didn't care about others. Um, I ended up living on the street homeless for two years, and it was there that I was arrested for the 13th time. Mm -hmm. And finally, they said, that's it. We're not doing jail anymore. We're putting you in prison. Wow. And that was the, it seemed like that was the end of my life, the end of the road for me. Right. And I wanted to die anyway, so it just seemed like a natural progression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I didn't know that Jesus was going to get a hold of me in my prison cell. And I had read a book uh, called Double Driver, and I didn't. I wasn't looking for God. I was reading the book because it was right. a gangster book, right? And I was a gangster. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so uh, I wasn't a gangster in my heart, mm -hmm. though. I just pretended like sure. I was a gangster because I. Those were the people that I ran with. You wanted to fit in the I, environment right. that you uh, were. Exactly, and that is the reason why sure. a lot of people join gangs because right. that becomes their family. Their right. family isn't there for them, and so these people seem. Right like they're going to be your family and have your back, as they say. Uh, but that's not always true either. They ha they're incapable of caring for you because they, uh, they don't care for themselves. Absolutely. So uh, when I was in prison, I read the book, and I got on my knees, and I cried out to God for over an hour, uh, just so much uh, pain. And it was very painful to realize how much I had hurt myself, how much I had hurt other people, and how much I had rejected God. But in his mercy, he just redeemed me right there, my spirit. There were uh, years afterward that I had to go through a lot of healing. Uh, my husband, Michael, has been a huge part of my journey, and he has uh, been a support and a stability awesome. that I needed. That is amazing. That's just amazing to hear the stories like this, how God is able to really turn um, our ashes for beauty. Mm -hmm. Everything that we experience, the darkness that we experience into something that would just glorify Him and redeem you uh, from all the wastelands in your past. From all, And He allows the, um, the new things to spring into your life. And He uses people. In this, in this instance, uh -huh. He used your husband to be able to really carry you through the transformation that you are experiencing today. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. He had, uh, for me, a uh, love that um, it was steadfast. And um, when we first got together, I thought, you know, he's going to leave me because yeah. everyone else had left me. Sure. And so I pushed back, pushed back, sure. pushed back. And then after several years, uh, I realized that he was not going anywhere. Yes. And so that allowed me to understand the father's heart that's amazing that uh, he wasn't gonna my father never changed but Michael showed me that God's love is faithful that he is stable and he will be there no matter what yes. And so that was what I needed to transition into and I just pray for everyone who's listening that it may not be a husband it right. may be a friend it may be someone at church yes um, but God has a someone for you that will help you on your journey. You just have to open your heart yes. and begin to trust and know that you will be hurt. You will be disappointed. The only one who will not let you down is Jesus. That's right. God the Father. And so, um, you know, I think we, we put so much emphasis on what other people can do for us, and then we get disappointed, and yes. then we go back into our shell. Absolutely. And the, what we need to do is make sure that we allow the Holy Spirit to keep our hearts and our minds open. Yes. To be, you know, you know, cautious, not to be, you know, foolish, yes. but to allow the Holy Spirit to use these people. And also the Word of God is the most powerful yes. tool that we can use to to be redeemed inside spiritually. Absolutely. Um, you are today a powerful speaker and an author of 
three books that have been very impactful in the lives of others. Um, you then later on, um, after you got married, you continued education, you became a registered nurse. Talk to us about the victorious life that you are having today because of the redemption work of Jesus Christ in your life. So when we, Michael and I first got married, we worked through a lot of things. There was a divorce. We were, had both been divorced. We both had small children. Mine weren't in the picture, but, but his were. And so there were a lot of things to work out in both of our lives. But God used it. We had a couch that we called our prayer couch, and we were on our knees constantly, not because we thought we should, but because we had to. Right. It was, we good. were compelled to be on our knees yes. praying for God to help us through every step. And so a lot of this healing had taken place, and I went back to school to get my registered nursing degree. And I actually graduated with honors, which was completely off my radar because I'd always wow. been a reader, bit, you know, relatively intelligent, but I thought I had killed all of my brain cells right. during my drug use. Of course. And so when I actually started getting A's, and then I started getting, you know, reviews for honor, I was just out, wow. out of this world. And then uh, I worked for 19 years as a nurse, and then Michael felt the Lord impress upon him that we were to go into full-time ministry. We had already been in ministry for about five years when I uh, ended my nursing career and became a full-time uh, author and um you know, our ministry is full, now full-time. That's amazing. That is amazing. Sharon, um, as you know, the, the rate of suicide in Iran is skyrocketing. And every day we hear about young adults and also women and men that um, have thoughts of suicide. They have attempted many times and they have failed. Um, what what do you have to say as someone who has walked this path and has experienced hopelessness and despair? What message do you have for those that probably are watching this program today and say, I'm at the end of the rope and I can continue on. i rather not live. Don't do it. <laughs> it's not worth it. It's God has a plan for your life and he can't fulfill it if you're not here. So uh, there's there's something around the corner that is going to change your life, and his name is Jesus. Amen. He is waiting for you to open your heart and your mind and your and your life to him. Yes. And he can come in because he is God in the flesh, can come in and transform your thoughts your heart, your mind. He may not change your situation, but he will change you. And so really don't do it. There's, there is something at the end of the rainbow. There's something that is beyond what you're going through right now that is going to be amazing. And then you get to go and be with Jesus in heaven forever. So even if, again, your situation doesn't change in this lifetime, you will have eternal life forever. And that's a long, long time. So I just encourage you to let God give you hope. Amen. Amen. Uh, as you were speaking, um, I was reminded of 2 Corinthians 1, 4, that talks about he comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others when, when they are in trouble. What you just did was actually um, um, uh, was the fulfillment of, of the scripture because mm -hmm. God comforted you when you were in trouble. And now you spoke to the audience that maybe uh, having thoughts of suicide today and you are comforting them to letting them know that there is a God that has a plan for them. Mm -hmm. There is a God that is able to transform your life. There is a God that has a purpose for you that can that you are the only one that can leave those imprints in this world. So we are here today with Sharon Dutra talking about how Jesus is able to give you a fresh new start. As a matter of fact, you wrote a book that is called New Beginning. Could you tell us more about what this book is all about? 
Sure. Uh, so New Beginnings is about the basic principles of the Christian faith. And uh, we know a lot of people come to Jesus, they accept him in their lives, but then they don't know what to do after that. They don't understand who he really is. The most important thing about Christianity is that Jesus, as I said before, is God in the flesh. Yes. That means that he was, you know, uh, he came in human form so that he could relate to us as humans. Yes. And so that he could die because we could not pay for our sin and he paid for our sin. Yes. And it's the most miraculous, beautiful story ever that God himself would come to this earth, leave heaven and lovingly take a sacrifice upon himself. And he didn't have to do it. Yes. He did it because of his immense, great love for us. And, but we have to enter into the relationship in order to have our sins forgiven. Yes. We can't just acknowledge that he's there. We have to invite him yes. into our lives. Absolutely. So this book, New Beginnings, is basically about, you know, who is Jesus? Who is God? Who's the Holy Spirit? What is the Bible? And how do we, what is sin? What is salvation? Mm -hmm. it, it goes through and it gives all the scriptures to back up the, the text and it's life transformation. Absolutely, absolutely. You touched on a very key, um, key concept and that was the love of our Father. Can you um, imagine us humans are created in the image of the Most High God and when we harm ourselves, when mm. we um, use substances that are just harmful and painful and hurting our body that is created in the image of our almighty God, how much does that hurt the Father's heart? How much did that hurt God's and God's the Father's heart when you were using drugs, mm -hmm. when you were using substances to really numb yourself to the pain of this world? And I know so many of our audience um, is probably watching this that are dealing with drug addictions and they can get set free from it mm -hmm. because that's the only thing that they can receive relief from. That's the only thing that, they, it, that can relieve them from the pains of this world, from the worries of this world. Um, so many people, Iranians, that are like in... Uh, under a lot of economic pressure right now, mm -hmm. um, the governmental restrictions, the, um, the um, you know, um, societal um, pressures that are under, that they're under, and causes them, like almost lead them to um, ungodly paths, such mm -hmm. as sexual addiction, drug addiction, um, possibly thoughts of suicide we've heard. And we hear these testimonies every day because of how much pressure they're under. What would you say to those people? And look at them in, in the camera and give them a message that, comes straight from the Father's heart mm -hmm. and of his love for them. And so allow them to really receive that through your words. Well, uh, a few days ago, I was privileged to speak at the largest men's prison in maximum prison in the world. And the message that I gave to the men there most of which who will spend their entire lives in that max, super maximum prison was a message of hope. And I used the, the story of the butterfly and the transformation that happens from the caterpillar to the butterfly and that you can fly within these walls, that this, these walls cannot keep your eternal soul locked up. And I feel that there are walls that we erect in our lives to keep from being hurt, to keep from being wounded, to deal with our pain. And it is the same exact story, is that you can fly, you can be set free, you can get out of the prison, whatever prison you find yourself in, whether it's in the walls or outside of the walls, the walls of your soul can be torn down 
and re-erected by the living God. And not only can he do it, but he wants to do it in your life. And I just pray that you would give Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible, a chance to come into your life and that you would find a way to get the scriptures read, that you would read them diligently so that you can have your mind and your heart transformed and changed and you will become a different person. Amen. That's so good. Um, well, friends, today we're here to talk to you about, again, how God is a redeeming God. How if even if we feel in our hearts that our entire life has been wasted, God is able to redeem your life and catapult you to where you need to be, right where you are. If you are living in hopelessness, if you are living in despair, if you feel like nothing goes your way anymore, there is a God that can give you hope. There is a God that has a plan and a purpose for your life. There is a God that wants to prosper you. He came to the earth not to to condemn you, but to give you life and life more abundantly. We are privileged and honored to have Sharon Dutra here on our program today so that she can share her story of redemption and mm -hmm. how God was able to transform her life just like God did it for her. God is able to do it for you. Amen. So today, if you're hearing this message, do not harden your hearts. Open up your heart. Allow the Holy Spirit to enter into your heart and change you and give you hope and a future that you need so that you can continue on this life fulfill, fulfilling your purpose and your destiny that He has predestined for you. Sharon, talk to us about the second book that you wrote, um, which the title of that is Be Transformed. So after, after you wrote the new beginnings of the foundational Christianity and what sin is, what, what Jesus did for us, then you were compelled to write a second book, and it's called Be Transformed. Talk to us more about that. Well, this is actually my first book. Oh, sorry. And that's okay. Uh, but it has subjects in it like uh, anxiety and uh, guilt and forgiveness. And we need to deal with these issues in our lives that we all face. Yes. No matter where we are, if we're rich or poor, male or female, we all have these issues that are in this book. That's right. One of the things I did want to mention is one of the chapters, like I said, is forgiveness. Yes. And I think that this is a huge problem for humanity. Mm -hmm. And I think it's one of the most, uh, one of the most things that keep us in bondage right. is unforgiveness. Yes. We, no matter what has been done, I have been abused, I've been neglected and abandoned and all that. And that, that is my old life, but those things I could have harbored in my heart for the rest of my life and said, those people did that to me. That's right. And forgiveness releases that. It doesn't mean that they didn't do anything wrong. It doesn't mean that you forget what they did. It means that you let it go in your heart and you let it, let them go because yes. God says that vengeance is mine. That's they right. will be paid for what they've done, yes. and you pray for them to come to Christ so that their sins can be forgiven, and it's just a freeing process, and it's it it's kind of circular. You know, yes. you forgive, then they feel release, and then they can forgive, and then it's just a, a process that's so beautiful, and so that is one of the most important, uh, I believe is one of the most important chapters in this book. That is absolutely true, and so many of us, um, deal with that unforgiveness. We were having our staff meeting um, this past Monday, and as a matter of fact, one of, our, one of our personnel was talking about how forgiveness is key in really our Christian walk. Yes. The very, um, when Jesus came back, when he was ascended, um, when he rose from the dead, when he breathed into uh, his disciples, the very first commandment he gave them was, forgive others. 
forgive others right. so that your your sins will be forgiven. So if, you know, I was, I was mentioning this during our meeting and you mentioned it, and it, I think it's very important that we share this because a lot of the issues that people have experienced, yes. the cause of it may be someone else. You know, it could be the parents, it could be the homes that they grew up in, it could be the environment, their surroundings, the schools that they went to, the crowds that they hung out with. All of that could be, we hold um, unforgiveness in our mm -hmm. hearts, you know, towards those people, which we need to set them free so that we can have a, a life free of, you know, bitterness and right. anger and all that. So um, I was mentioning um, that if, if someone, if I um, know that I'm going to be ascended to heaven and my daughter is sitting next to me, I would tell her the very most important thing that would help her succeed in life. And when Jesus was ascending to heaven, the very first thing he commanded um, his disciples was forgive others so that your sins will be forgiven. And so to me, forgiveness, allowing yourself, allowing the Holy Spirit to work in you um, so that you can forgive others. It's such a liberating, yes. liberating experience and you will be able to live freely just the way he wants you to, free of bitterness, free of anger, free yes. of rage and be able to live the life that he wants you to live. That's that right. is very true about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now, Sharon, we do have very limited time. I do think that the anointing of God is upon you because he has set you free from all that um, you experienced in life. And I want you to specifically um, point to the audience that we have and pray for them so that if they are struggling with drug addictions, thoughts of suicide, abandonment, homelessness, all of those that you experience so that they can receive comfort and they can get set free from them. Yes, I am privileged to pray for you today and I just uh, ask Father that you would reach into the hearts and minds and souls and spirits of each person listening each person that is going through heartache, trial, pain, failures, misery, feeling hopeless, like there's no way out, like there's no future, there's no way to change, I just want to ask you to invite Jesus into your heart right now, that you would say, I will commit to you as much as I've committed to the other things in my life that have not worked, I will recommit myself to you, Jesus. I will allow you to enter into my heart and my mind and my circumstances. I invite you in, not just cracking the door open, but throwing it wide open and saying, please come in. I hear that you are the only way, mm. the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through Jesus, and he is our gate. He is our bridge. He is the one that will bring us into the Father's presence. And this God that I'm talking about is not a God of hatred. He is not a God of fear. He is a God of love. Yes, he is a, love, a God of justice, but he loves you so intensely you can't even imagine it. And so I just ask you to turn from whatever is keeping you in prison right now, whatever's keeping you in bondage, and instead turn. Repent means to turn 180 degrees and go in a different direction. And I just pray for that. That is called salvation. And it's the beginning of a relationship. And you can also get uh, download my books that will help you to begin to understand this relationship with Jesus, who he is and what he's done for you, and the life that he has planned for you. So we pray these things in Jesus' precious name. We thank you for your sacrifice, Lord. And uh, we just, I just pray for everyone listening and watching today. Amen. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. And we want to let you know that both her books, um, Sharon's book, Be Transformed, as well as New Beginning, are available on our website, as well as on Telegram, one of the social media platforms for you to be able to download. Her books have been um, in the top 10 books of the most downloaded books on several different platforms and websites. And I'm sure it, they will be a blessing to you and I hope that it would transform your lives as they, uh, as Jesus transformed Sharon's lives. All right, God bless you guys. Thank you so much, Sharon, for Thank joining you. us Thank on you this so much. program. I appreciate it, Lily. You blessed us a lot. Thank, Thank you. you so much. All right.